One of the more searched games related to 7th generation emulation is Sonic Unleashed. This game is a console exclusive and is only playable on PC via a PS3 or Xbox 360 emulator. But the more important topic here is that which emulator works better with this game. As you can see in the comparison, Xenia works way better on the surface. But what if I told you that it's not actually true? Yes, you can experience above 60 frame rates with better visuals, but there's a big payoff for that. And that's the stability of your game. For example, when I was playing through the first mission, and I already knew that installing a mod called Xenia Unleashed is necessary for preventing some crashes, but even with this mod being installed, I could hardly get past the first mission without glitches or crashes. So I did a lot of digging for how some users can play some levels that I can't even reach. The answer was pretty simple, save game data. It's as easy as copying the save files into the content directory of Xenia. But does it worth all the headaches, copying save files, downloading mods, installing and setting up a mod manager, and downloading a custom version of Xenia? I don't think so, to be honest. And with all that being installed, I still couldn't get past the first level. That's why a save Save game is needed when you are playing the game with Xenia. But again, this doesn't fix crashes, it's just a smart way of avoiding them in certain missions because now you have all the missions available and you can choose what mission is better for playing the game with less crashes. But if you can play the game from start to finish, where would the fun be? I personally like to play the game from the start to finish, so this is why I pick RPCS3 for playing this game, simply because it's more stable, you can play the game from start to finish without crashing, but it gives you less frame rates. Your problem will not be as big of a deal when you have a powerful system. Although, even with optimal settings and very powerful hardware, this game is known to have a pretty inconsistent frame rate, especially in stages such as Rooftop Run Night and Jungle Joyride Day. So let's get to the configuration of this game. First, right click on the game and create a new configuration. Head on to the CPU tab, set the CPU block size to Mega and make sure that TSX instructions is disabled. Now go to the GPU tab, head over to the frame limit box. Turning off the frame limit allows the game to run at frame rates above 60, only if your hardware can support it. If you think that that you don't have a very powerful system, set the frame limit to 60. Frame rates above 60 introduces issues with ice physics. Set Zico accuracy to relax and turn on asynchronous texture streaming. Now head on to the advanced tab. Set maximum spurs threads to 4 and finally set the driver wake up delay to 200 microseconds. Now head over to the game's patch manager. Enable all the patches except the aspect ratio. Remember that if you have a powerful system, you can try turning these patches off because they improve performance at the cost of graphics. So that was it guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my content, please like and subscribe.